Welcome back. I had hoped to have both Annette Tadeo and her opponent, Congresswoman Maria Elvira Salazar, on the show today, either together to discuss the issues or separately in different blocks. Salazar agreed to come on only if she would not have to debate Tadeo. We agreed, but nevertheless, at the last minute, Salazar backed out. In fact, Salazar has refused all invitations to debate or appear with Tadeo. That's unfortunate for voters. Nevertheless, here's my interview with Annette Tadeo. We've seen all of the increase in the, in, in, in the attack ads, and they're getting more ferocious by the minute. But, uh, but we know that, that the polling has to be matched with the feeling on the ground, and that has definitely been the case. People have been responding to my message, my story, and to the fact that we, we have historically had such a, a great representation in our district, whether we agree with, whether it was Dante Fassell, Claude Pepper, Ileana Rosletten, and or Donna Shalala, we might not have agreed on everything, but we knew they were res res respecting their constituents. They were representing us with honor and, and, and we were not embarrassed to have them as our congressperson. That's not the case here. But the perception is, is that, is that the Republicans are feeling very good about Dade County overall. They yeah. believe that Dade County could actually become a red county for Governor Ron DeSantis. And the th thought that I've had explained to me by my Republican uh, folks who I talk to say that Ron DeSantis will be a rising tide that will lift and help all Republican candidates throughout the state, but particularly in Dade County. And as a result, that'll make the difference in, in your race. And as a result, Maria Elvira Salazar will win. Well, absolutely. I don't disagree with with the fact that indeed uh, DeSantis actually in our internal polling, uh, it showed that um, he's winning my district by six points, the same poll that shows that I am up by one. So definitely it's happening, but it is not happening in my race because again, both my opponent and myself are quite defined and what we have found is that the attacks on socialism, communism are not sticking because I have a record. I'm known. People know my story, the story of my dad and how I came here. And, and I have made sure to define her, but something that hasn't been done, pushing back on her votes. We are feeling good and we're seeing, Jim, a lot of DeSantis to Dale voters, I, they're even some of them texting me the pictures of the votes. It is quite something to see. And I, even I have been a bit surprised to see it. Well, let me ask you that. So what do you think are some of the key differences between yourself and Salazar on the issues? Let's talk about issues for a second, you know, specifically in terms of the last time Salazar ran, obviously she had never taken any votes before. Yeah. Now she has two years of a voting record. What votes in particular do you think resonate as being counter to the interests of the district? Well, let me start with the vote, uh, uh, which she took, for example, against uh, the infrastructure bill. She votes against it. She says it's socialism, and that's the reason why she voted against it. But then she turns around and sends a letter to the Biden administration asking for that socialism money uh, and when it comes now she's running on the fact that she says she brought that money for the port of miami that is the kind of thing that our community is finding out about and finds unacceptable but there are so many more for example she voted against a, a, a codifying roe v wade she voted against being able to travel to another state to have a medical procedure i mean the government is going to tell us what we can do in the privacy with a doctor and i mean there's medicare medicaid so many things that we need to that, that that we have differences on well let's talk so what are some of the key um issues in this race that you believe and tell me your position on on those issues what are the key issues you believe defining this election well first of all let me start with of course 
uh, we need to get the funding down here and not just simply uh, call it socialism. And I just spoke about that one uh, because that's one of the key jobs of a congressperson is to, is to really fight for the funding for our community uh, so that we can have the investment we deserve, uh, whether it's in an infrastructure, housing. We have major issues in our community and we need to make sure that we have someone that no matter who's in power is going to work to make sure that we're taken care of and that we get the funding that we deserve. In addition to that, I mean, there are, I mean, a big key difference in this race is Roe v. Wade. Roe v. Wade is on the ballot and she clearly does not, we are completely different on this issue and is unacceptable that my daughter is going to have less rights than those that were afforded to me. When it comes to gun violence as well, I mean, clearly this is something that affects a lot of us. We, and especially our kids who are living through terrorism every day that they go to school. And instead of having someone that will work, for example, to ban weapons of war, which are assault weapons, we, we have someone who has not, doesn't even talk about it. Every time there's a shooting, she doesn't even say anything about it. It is, it is not top of mind. And we need someone that is going to think of these major issues that we need to work on. But the biggest one, the biggest one is our democracy, Jim. She has gone on Spanish radio and perpetuated the big lie. She has said that 200,000 additional voters in Pennsylvania voted, then were registered to vote. Something that has been proven not to be true, even in the courts. And so to have someone like Maria Elvira, who constantly is talking about freedom in Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela, which I want as well, but I cannot fight for freedom and democracy in those countries if you're not willing to defend it right here. And right now we have someone who is not willing to do that. So here's, here's where I think Democrats, if they lose many of these seats around the country, I'm not talking about necessarily your race, but in a lot of places, while you're talking about guns and, and abortion rights and those sorts of issues, democracy being on the line, all, I won't disagree that any of those aren't important, but the economy, voters tend to vote on economic issues. They feel right now that inflation is rising, that they're not being able to keep food or as much food on the table, their costs are going up. What can you do? What can you do that is different from what Salazar has done to affect changes in the economy and make the lives of ordinary Floridians better? Uh, absolutely, Jim. This is definitely a top issue and actually a big difference between her and I because I feel almost like she she wants this issue to stay because that's that's all she has to run on uh, no record to run on so she has to run and she wants the issue not to go away and keeps voting against every solution that is put forward the problem is real i'm feeling it i'm a small business owner i've told you that but we've recovered faster we have historic unemployment but then every time you have a vote and an opportunity to vote on something to help people for example the gas pump you know when you go to the pump you're feeling it we've been feeling it what do they do they just play with this and that's not okay you know she voted against the, the not being able to gosh you know to 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 charge people more that's absolutely not okay but she keeps complaining about the problem but i don't know what her solution is and and obviously see the infrastructure bill that I also already talked about, but even something as simple, Jim, as insulin, a life-saving drug, or being able to negotiate with the drug companies. She votes again against, and, and you know, a cap on insulin of $35 will help people right here in our community. Have you had any debates? Have you had any interaction with her where, where the two of you have been able to sit side by side answer questions and let voters and the public hear both of you back and forth talking about the issues? I have 
challenged her to four debates, two in English, two in Spanish. I, I have shown up uh, so far <laughs> to everything, every opportunity, and you're not alone, Jim. She didn't show up to a Spanish radio the, debate. She didn't show up to an English TV debate. She's not even showing up to an interview where she would be she would be alone after me before me whichever one the point is it is an insult to her constituents that she is not willing to talk about her record to answer questions i've been in the legislature five years i know that i can talk about my record i'm proud of it that's why i have bipartisan support because i have actually delivered and that is what our district need and as a former TV person, for her to not understand the key role of media, to ask questions, to probe us. Look, sometimes you 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 have you have a hat, you're a tough interviewer. And I know, I know, I don't, I don't, I understand why someone would be afraid, <laughs> but then don't run. Don't try to be a public servant. You have to be able to get those tough questions if you want to represent the people in a free society. Let's not talk about freedom and then, you know, this, the, our constituents and the press, because we don't want to have to answer to tough questions.